All right, everyone, I think uh, let's get started. Um, so my name is Paritosh Mukhasi, and um, I'm a kernel developer at Wolfram Research. And today's topic is um, robust convex optimization. Now, uh, Rob just uh, finished giving a talk on, uh, you know, just the general uh, optimization framework and, uh, you know, all the various functions that we have. The one that I'll be talking about um, specifically is robust convex optimization. So before we even jump into robust convex optimization, uh, let's first talk about what is convex optimization. Okay, so convex optimization is uh, you know, a problem wherein you have to minimize a certain function and it is subject to a certain number of constraints, which are these FIs. Uh, what makes an optimization problem convex is that the, all the functions that we're looking at, F0 and all the FIs, are convex. And what I mean by convex is that it strictly satisfies this inequality. And, uh, and, and when, they, the, uh, the, when the functions have these kind of inequalities, uh, the convex optimization can be solved very efficiently uh, using very specialized uh, methods. Now, uh, in our case in, uh, uh, in Wolfram language, um, the way you would solve these convex optimization problems is you basically specify this objective function, and then you can specify equality constraints, which is this first constraint here, and you can then specify a number of um, uh, uh, conic constraints, which are given by um, this. And this, you'll notice this little kappa over here and that kappa indicates what kind of uh, a constraint you're dealing with. So I have listed over here a number of different, uh, the, the different uh, uh, cones uh, that we support. So you could have uh, non-negative cones, norm cones, semi-definite exponential, dual exponential, power and dual power cones. And so if you can, if you can formulate your constraints into a form that, can, that, into one of these forms over here, and give it to uh, convex optimization, we, it'll happily be able to solve that for you. Okay, so now that we've, we've quickly gone over convex optimization, um, what is robust convex optimization? Well, it's, it's a slight variation from convex optimization in that you end up having these um, parameters. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna use the word parameters a little loosely here because technically they are uncertainties here. Um, but you have these uh, parameters theta and this um, and and the constraints and and the objective are um, dependent on these constraints uh, on these uncertainties and these uncertainties themselves are subject to certain convex constraint which are these GI. And when you have a problem of this form then we um, call such a problem as robust convex optimization. So um, the best way to understand this is to directly jump into a simple example to get an idea of, um, you know, what exactly is it when we talk about robust? What is what is the, what does robust actually mean? So let's start with um, a, a simple linear optimization problem. You know, you have uh, bounds on x and you have bounds on y. Now, if you solve this without any, uh, okay, okay. Without, any um, uh, without any uncertainties in there, then you get a result, uh, pretty standard stuff. Now, what if your upper bound uh, on, on your X and Y are uncertain, meaning that you don't actually know that it's going to be one. It could be 1.1, it could be 0.9, it could be 0.8, you just don't know. So, that, so when, when such an uncertainty exists, the result that you get this one one uh, result that you get may or may not be feasible depending upon what your uncertainty is. For example, if this was 0.9, then this one one would be, was, is actually infeasible. It's outside the domain. So your so so that so so this one one is no longer uh, um, a valid solution. So how does one take these into account? These uncertainties into account. So let's let's uh, step through. The, uh, a basic process of how we how we would go about doing that. So if so now we have established that okay our upper bounds have some kind of an uncertainty. So we'll call that uncertainty delta y, and we'll give we'll give some constraint on that uh, uncertainty. So in this case it's going to vary from negative point one to point one. 
Okay, now the objective for us is to find a optimal solution so that no matter what value of delta x and delta y are taken with, within these uh, bounds, uh, you should the solution will always remain feasible. Okay, so one approach would be well, let's just sample delta x from this constraint and delta y from this constraint and just generate a new set of bloated set of constraints and then put that into convex optimization and solve it. And there's nothing wrong with this approach. You get a result. In this case, uh, it comes back to get, and giving you the, the, the expected result of 0.9, 0.9, but the approach is horribly inefficient and you're not guaranteed to get the optimal solution uh, all the time. So there, there has to be a better way to tackle these kind of uncertainties. Well, one approach would be, or a more efficient approach would be, well, find out what is the worst possible value this delta x can take and this delta y can take. Um, and, and you can do that very simply by just minimizing over the constraints, at least for this particular example. And it, and it says that, okay, the, for the worst possible case, you need negative 0.1 as your uh, as your variation and delta y should also be negative 0.1. So when you substitute that into your convex optimization problem, you end up with 0.9.9, 9, which is sort of intuitive. And it's for this particular example, it's almost obvious. So this was your original, let me just make this a little bigger. So this was your original uh, uh, problem without the uncertainty. Now when the uncertainty is taken into account, you end up having this, uh, your your new uh, solution is red uh, is is this uh, represented by this red dot so this red dot means that uh, means that no matter what values of delta x delta y you took this solution will always be valid so that's that's what we mean when we talk about robust okay so now the question is all right now that we have manually done this one example and it's almost sort of intuitive well well how do we do this in a more general way, and I, I'd like to talk about that uh, uh, in the in the in the coming minutes. So let's take a slightly more involved example. Notice I'm not going to talk. There's no, uh, we're not going to concern also also the objective here. We're just going to talk about the constraint and the uncertainty associated with it. So in this case, we end up having a norm uncertainty. So you have um, this delta x and delta y as your uncertainty, but those but those uncertainties are bound by this norm constraint. Okay. So if I were to, now I can take all sorts of extreme uh, regions and I can generate a feasible region. This is you know, just based on trial and error, but it turns out that this green part is the feasible region. If all these other, uh, 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 other regions that you're seeing are one extreme or the other, but an, but an intersection of all of them will give you the actual, um, actual feasible region. Okay, so now how do we how do we formulate this problem? So remember, what we want to do is generate what is called as a robust counterpart, meaning that we want to be able to convert our original uncertain problem in, into something that can be solved by uh, within the convex optimization framework. Okay, so in this case, you know you can you can rewrite your constraint this this constraint of one delta x delta y. You can split that out and uh, and have the x plus y here and the uncertainties grouped together, okay? And for this particular case, the way you want to, uh, want to um, figure out what your robust counterpart is, is by maximizing this term, which is the left-hand side term, over your norm cone constraint for uh, norm cone constraint. And it turns out that when you, when you maximize it, you, that this maximization problem is, is equivalent to this, uh, this um, norm of x, square, of x and y. And you can see that very easily by just doing max value of that uncertainty. And it says that it's half square root of x squared plus y squared, which is, and, and this constraint is actually a second order norm cone constraint. So if I, if I plug that, into our convex optimization. And now I have a norm of x, y, and uh, you know, the right-hand side is just um, uh, two times this. And when you evaluate it, you get a result. And when you plot it against, oops, 
And if I were to plot it, it shows up right there, okay? And which is, which is the correct solution. So the, what I'm trying to show you here is this is, this is sort of the, the underlying methodology that is used in order to generate the robust counterpart or AKA the, um, a new problem that solves the original uncertain problem. Okay, now obviously it would be silly for uh, us to uh, have to do that every single time. It, is, uh, it would be more uh, efficient if, if the whole thing was wrapped up and could be done conveniently within a function. So for that, for that very reason, we have this new function called robust convex optimization. It takes in an objective and then it takes in those uncertainty parameters and you give them, give the uh, parameter constraints associated with it and how, uh, and, and the uh, corresponding variable constraints. Okay, so the exact same problem that we just looked at, um, instead of going through all the maximization and all that, we are going to say that these are my uncertainty delta x delta y, this is the norm cone uh, uncertainty constraint, and this is, this is my variable constraint. And you solve that, and you get the result. It's the exact same result as before, and if I were to plot it, it's the same result. Okay, now, um, we talked about tractability and we talked about robust counterpart. The thing is that uh, it's not um, a given that, uh, you know, any combination of constraint and parameter constraints are going to give you a solution. There are actually, you only have very limited number of cases that you can actually use uh, or formulate your problem as in order to, for it to be able to be tractable and we get a robust counterpart for it. And I've listed here, um, you know, the, the, the combinations that make uh, getting a closed form tractable counterpart possible. Okay, I won't go through them. It's just there for you, for you to know that this is not like uh, the only case that, that, that is pretty general is that when you have, um, um, uh, you know, linear, uh, non, uh, linear inequalities. And in such cases, you can, your parameter constraints can be just about anything, any convex uh, cone, and it will work. Everything else has very strict constraint, uh, restrictions. Okay, so um, robust optimization, the thing, uh, thing about it is that it looks like, you know, you could, you could put some simple constraints together, but in reality, if you look at, uh, look at the, actual, um, uh, the actual setup, um, there, there is the uncertainty space that you have can be, can be uh, extremely complicated. And so in this case, even though alpha and beta are my uncertainties and they're constrained by this norm, alpha and beta can take uh, infinite number of values uh, that will still satisfy this. And so trying to get a result using the previous approach wherein we'll just enumerate as many alpha and beta instances as possible and just give it to uh, convex optimization is not a good idea. And so the, that's, uh, so it's better to allow robust convex optimization to uh, do that for you. Okay, so moving on, what if the problem is not tractable, which is, which is the next obvious question. And uh, here's an example wherein the problem is not going to be tractable. And uh, in such cases, you know, it, it goes through the steps and it figures, uh, internally it figures out there's nothing we can do about it. But all hope is not lost. We can still get some kind of a result uh, using uh, some approximations. And we have a couple of methods. One is called polyhedral approximation which basically takes your norm cone constraint and converts it into linear constraints. And when it does that, it opens up, the, uh, opens up your possibility of solving the robust problem. The other is the cutting set method. Cutting set method is extremely general. It doesn't make any assumptions, so it, it works. The problem is that cutting set method and polyhedral approximation, they're rather expensive methods. So uh, if, if you're using it, be aware that uh, you know, there'll be significant overhead. And in this case, for this particular example, you'll notice that the results that you're getting uh, in the X are close enough, close, uh, but the Y it's not. Um, and if I were to plot it, they are close to each other, but the robust, uh, the polyhedral approximation does a worse job because it's actually approximating norm cones, so there will be some inherent error in the cutting set doesn't make any much assumptions, so its result is much more accurate. So that's what, that's what we are showing. Okay, so moving on. So with all this hype about robustness, robust optimization, 
why do we even care? Why do we need? Can't we just get rid of uncertainties or make some approximations and just uh, go on along our happy way? Um, so uh, to convince you that that's not always going to be the case, I'm going to uh, uh, take this one specific example. So you have two drugs that your company has to manufacture and they want to maximize their profit. And uh, in order to manufacture these two drugs, they need to uh, get a couple of active agents from these raw materials, R1 and R2. So um, I'm not gonna go through each one of these in detail. There are a bunch of constraints associated with them. You have revenue constraints, storage, you have manpower, equipment, budget, product. You have all these various constraints associated with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate this. Now, the, the tricky part here, or the interesting part rather, is that um, each one of these raw materials, R1 and R2, the amount of active agent that you can uh, extract from that is, uh, is uncertain. So there's this uncertainty associated with it. So it could be plus or minus this really small amount, or for the raw, second raw material, it could be, you can extract 0 0.02 uh, grams per kg, but it can also vary, okay? And what happens when you take these uncertainties into account? That's the, that's the main question that I want to address here. Okay, so we are going to uh, 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 put our active agent constraints in there and uh, use robust convex optimization to figure out, oops, explicitly, did I miss something there? Oh, brother, the total cost is missing, so. Give me just one second. Uh, total cost is your operational costs. I got something wrong here, but okay. Let's try that again, and there you go. That's that's your result, right? So it says uh, based on robust optimization, manufacture only drug one and. Uh, by 877 units um, uh, of raw material one to produce drug one. And when you follow that advice, you end up getting a profit of uh, around 8,300. Okay, now what if you didn't take those uncertainty into account? Uh, which is, you know, you basically say, I don't care about fluctuation. Um, and in such a case, it says, okay, manufacture still manufacture drug one, but now purchase only uh, the raw material, second raw material. And without uh, this uncertainty constraint, your profit actually goes up, which is a good thing. But what happens when in actual real life, those, uh, you're, you start doing the extraction of the, raw, uh, of the active agent and things are not working out as in, as in the ideal circumstance. So to analyze that, let's, uh, uh, let's uh, put it into a parametric complex optimization and uh, uh, provide it with the result that we got from um, the nominal case, okay? In which case it said, uh, manufacture, um, uh, you know, use only raw material two, and, you know, the worst case scenario is that we won't be able to extract uh, um, all of it. In such a case, your profit can actually decrease by 21%. On the other hand, if you used uh, the robust solution and uh, purchased only raw material one with 877 units, then you would, even in the worst case scenario, you would get a loss of only 6%, okay? So you can clearly see that just based on um, the, these kind of decision, if, if you end up getting a bad batch of your raw material too, you, your company could end up losing 21% of their profit, but if you use a robust solution, you're at least assured that the worst you can do is 6%, okay? So just to hammer that point home, if you if you look at the graph here, you know this is the ideal case, the very top one. And if the active agent ended up being really bad, then you know you get a slow decline of profit, and in the worst case, you end up getting a 21% decline. But with a robust result, no matter what happens, you'll always get a 6% uh, uh, at most a 6% decrease in profit. Okay. So I hope I've I've made a case for robust complex optimization here. Um, let's look at a, a geometry-based example. Um, this is, uh, it, typically you wouldn't think that this would be uh, uh, in the realm of robust optimization, but this, this is a creative way of looking at it. Now, imagine that you have a bunch of circles of various radi uh, different radius, 
and you want to find the a smallest circle that encompasses all these small subcircles. So let's, uh, these are our um, random centers and each one of the centers is associated with a random radius. So we're going to um, put uncertainty um, variables, uh, which are, which we'll define here. And uh, the, the, we will re redefine the problem as saying that in, we'll define the subcircles as a point which is uncertain in, the, in its position. And the uncertainty in its position is defined by the, the circle itself, which, is, which can be described as a norm constraint. So you have uncertainty in your centers, and then you say that, okay, um, you know, the, my, the position uncertainty is governed by, the, by, by this um, equation of a circle. So let's do that. We uh, construct our constraints. Oops, moved a little too quickly. I just wanted to show you what the constraints would look like. So there are a whole bunch of these constraints. You have your so your objective is to find you know the the, the encompassing circle center and the radius, and you have all these constraints associated with it. Okay, you send that off to robust convex optimization, and it should give a result in a few seconds. And there it is. And when you plot it, those are your different circles, which we have treated for this particular example as a point with different, uh, with a varying uncertainty. And it gives us the bounding uh, circle for these, uh, for these cases. Now you can make this even more general. You can make these circles as ellipsoids. You can, uh, you can do combination of ellipsoids, circles and box constraints. I mean, it's just uh, use your imagination and you should be able to reformulate this geometry problem into a robust uh, problem. Okay, um, I think I might be a little ahead on time. Um, and so what I have for you here is uh, a number of references. If you're new to robust uh, op optimization, um, it, is, it is a fairly specialized topic. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the pioneers of this work are uh, you know, Bentel, Nemirovsky, Boyd. Um, uh, so, so you'd be, uh, so, so the first reference that is actually the standard book that they have written on this topic. And there are a number of other um, uh, links that I've also put together if you want to get a, a course or a refresher course on how to, how to, uh, uh, you know, look at robust optimization problems and what it means. Okay. Um, looks like I have, we have a few minutes here, so why don't I um, uh, take some questions here. Um, okay, so, so Boris asked a question, is it possible to combine optimization with the solve function family? I don't see why not. Um, you might have to wrap it around another function so that, you know, the interplay could, uh, would work. But uh, I, I, I don't see why you couldn't use that. Um, I'll, I'm trying to think of an example, but, uh, but right off the bat, my instinct says that it should be possible. Um, Jose, you, your question is, is there a statistical characterization of the uncertainties or is that not, the kind, not in this uh, kind of optimization problem? Well, there is a statistical, um, for, uh, at least for this robust optimization, the problems that we are looking at here they don't uh, have a statistical characterization, but there are um, there are these things called as chance constraints, which have uh, probability measures associated with them, and that that is actually on our immediate to do list. So uh, once that is in, then I think it, your your uh, question becomes more relevant. Okay, um, any other questions? Well, um, uh, if you have any other questions, you know, just ping me if. Uh, uh, if you don't have my email, which I have forgotten uh, to put over here, it's paritosham at wolfram.com, right? Um, drop me an email and uh, yeah, we'll, I'd be happy to answer any of the questions. We also have an optimization meetup coming up at 3.30 uh, to 5, when Rob, myself, and Nina are going to be there. So um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, we can, we can talk about it there as well. Um, all right. Well, looks like I'm ahead of schedule here. so. Um, yeah, Nina's talk is right after me, so please, uh, please make sure to uh, attend that one. It's going to talk about uh, uh, various solvers and all the cool stuff that uh, she's been doing with the plugin methods. So, all right, guys, um, thanks again for attending. Uh, see you guys around.